So now I would like to invite and introduce our ne next guest, and he is Mr. P K D Nambiar. Uh, but one thing I will tell Mr. P K D Nambiar: this is the second time you are asking to have the party. Please see to it because I, I have to go as per the my protocol. But anyway, sir, I am a young entrepreneur. I also have to survive uh, for my survival. I have to <laughs> get into my <laughs> work. The evenings <laughs> are taken by the TV channel. So I your know. shows are always in the morning. What to do? Yes. yes, that's why because I do not want to compete with the national challenges. They are <laughs> huge, big. So, Mr. P K D Nambiar is an entrepreneur, a marketing strategist, a columnist, and a well-known political analyst. Mr. P K D Nambiar is many in one and one in many. He is the now this uh, this is a bit contradictory. If you are uh, um, one in many, then so you can uh, very well. Anyway, he is the M D M D and C E O of Flex Communications and reputed. Marcom agency in India. He is the founder of Big Square Solutions, a software company. He is a prominent face on national television. He shares his point of view through various political and business debates on the leading news channels like NDTV India, Times Now, CNBC, CNN, News 18, News X, India News, Mojo Story, NDTV 24 by 7, to name a few. As a columnist, his articles and opinions are regularly featured in all major national and regional dailies. He is a powerful speaker and has addressed hundreds of socio political business and motivational programs over the years he has received numerous business and marketing excellence awards a uh, welcome mr pk dinambiar on our show mr pk dinambiar you have heard what dr cv anand bose has uh, given his views very very strong views we would like to know from you your views on petrol prices mr pk dinambiar please thank you mr goyal once again uh, for having me on the show Firstly, I must say that you should always have Mr. Bose at the last. The reason being, once he speaks, after that, no panelist. I have always seen that nobody has anything further to add because he is such a wonderful orator, and especially he is an encyclopedia of all information. So uh, I think I always enjoyed listening to him. And thank you, sir. Uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to share uh, a program with you again. So I think uh, the petrol prices is like a chicken and egg story. Today, I may not agree completely with Mr. Dubos. I am a, a great sympathizer of this particular government. I'm a great fan of Mr. Modi. And I support this government every day in the evenings on primetime ch television channels. Even though uh, multiple views are there in the petrol prices, people talk about the tax, which country needs to have huge taxation. The times have come for us to realize that we need growth. The individual needs to grow. The society as, as we need to grow, as every state needs to grow. And so as our economy and as a nation, we need to grow. But is that the, the growth directly comes only from the tax? That may not be really right. Secondly, is it really just a taxation or is it really more of like a tax terrorism? So I believe that, and in this, nobody, I mean, no governments, no politicians, or no new, new bureaucrat, nobody is uh, great in this. Everybody is equally responsible for having a century uh, on a petroleum price, which is simply not acceptable. Now, who takes what, whether it is 33%, whether it is 40%, or overall, if it is a 60% tax, that is simply not acceptable. Now, the question is that whether is it, it's a chicken and egg story. So governments read fund money for the infrastructure projects, for the welfare project, but in the same time, this same money needs to come from your own pocket. So your money is taken from you and given it to in a different form, in the form of a welfare. Here is, I think the high time has come for our political class or even our economist. I mean, I would say even more than the political class, the economy, the so-called economist needs to come up that what are the other method of growth in this country? Do we really need to, is our systems are well oiled, well uh, <clears throat> defined to reach out to the only people, those who are required to get these welfare measures or the people whomsoever is getting uh, the welfare measures are being open to everybody without even having any cap. So the challenge of petroleum prices are many. One says that it adds to an inflation. The other says that it adds to every kind of an inflation, not only the food prices. 
and on the other side you also want the economic development needs to happen that also comes from only the uh, through these taxes now there is i always say in multiple places i said that there are two taxation tax system where there are two fuel economy in our country mr goyal you will be surprised other than the petrol there is another fuel economy you know what is that fuel economy the fuel economy is the liquor excise uh, the, 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 uh, in the evening when you have a peg in the evening you should be understanding that that is even more tax so the revenue coming from all the state and the center is predominantly becoming more and more the, or the state and the center is becoming more and more dependent on the fuel economy whether it is a petrol or the human fuel which the uh, a large number of people takes uh, some, some states like uh, kerala or punjab they are heavily dependent on the excise duty which they collect or the tax which they collect from the 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 liquor and they are i mean even in delhi for an example the state government is quite bit dependent on the uh, the, the, the human fuel not the vehicle fuel the, the other fuel which i say the, the liquor in fact during the covid uh, first wave when the lockdown was over the immediate thing what they opened is this um, all the liquor shop which is governed sold i mean the, the liquor is sold by the government in most of the states so that overall what we need to have a system how can we reduce the tax burden on the people rather than taxing them more and more on a daily basis you don't want it to be uh, we don't want infrastructure only on the pr pr pretext of that collecting money from you so you are taxed in every places whether it is uh, uh, or a toll tax road tax fuel tax then how many more taxes we need in india or every individual in this country need to take the burden of tax i believe whether uh, uh, we support this government whether we support the cause what they are doing etc 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 i believe that the tax system in this country needs an overhauling and complete overhauling and we becoming as a government or a mis government missionaries are becoming more and more only and only taxing more and more is the only revenue source needs to have a second thought on the contrary because i am also contradicting myself uh because we always have in the evening debates that a congressman is coming and saying that or you see it in the social media arun jetli sushma swaraj uh, uh, riding on a bullet cart in delhi uh, during the uh, upa regime just protesting against the uh, the, the petrol prices then the, uh, the the petroleum price rise now there is a contradiction with that particular stuff is this simple if you really look at the upa 1 and 2 and this particular government so i am again as i said that i am not i will never ever uh, support the kind of taxes which we are charging at least in our country but only comparing between the two that is the upa and the the present government this government is transferring each and every money to everybody's account so in a way the benefit of the the tax collected is giving it to you directly in your hand secondly in the upa 1 and 2 the average road construction was less than 10 kilometers per day in the national highway this time we have touched 37 kilometers per day road construction is happening the national highway which is a world record in itself so there is a lot, i mean of course we also know that the both in during the covid 1 and the 2 the kind of uh, economic loss the government has faced and where will this deficit or this gap will be filled maybe by taxing so i think the, uh, the every government whether it is a state or the central government needs to really work much more harder and one of the main way of doing that would be the over dependability of us on the petroleum products that of course we know that 90% of that is imported rather than that we need to look at different fuels which may reduce our importing uh, in, in, in the oil imports uh, helping us to reserve our uh, the, the 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 dollar or the the foreign currency exchange 
there, there is no other method. If you really go in this same level, we, we will never, politicians never wanted to, as Mr. Bose said, both the center and the state, they both don't want it to have this to be in the GST. The moment you put that into the GST, which is maximum is 28 percentage. So where will this, the rest of the deficit will be filled. So the question is that, is there any other method wherein we can, the governments can get more money rather than taxing more and more to the people. So political will is the most important one, but more than that, I think we need economic solutions, which all the governments in India currently is lacking. The only way to generate more and more money is becoming taxing more and more to the people may not be the right governance, which we need to have. If we don't, if we are not able to create a different method, so you have income tax, you have excise duty, you have, so how many more taxes? Despite the fact that large number of taxes have been demolished and put it into one tax, still I feel that I'm an entrepreneur and I feel that the number of taxes which we are, or the compliance which we need to do in today's day is simply not acceptable in the modern India or of 21st century. How many more compliances we need to do? Secondly, that differentiation, I also have one more point, Mr. Boss, that you were talking about the, the, the business people or the people who um, um, earn more maybe should be given a different pricing. That may not be a right strategy of a 1.3 billion people. This is one of the area where we have actually failed us in the last 70 years, because most of the time these measures have been given, I mean, uh, how do you ensure a housewife is getting it or somebody or else? So I, we, we feel that I I am always of an opinion of give jobs to the people, empower them with the money in the form of a job. Don't give them subsidy. Don't give them freebies. And that the, these freebies are the one which really kill our democracy. The uh, Give opportunity for corrupt practices rather than that give them opportunities to get a decent job, give them a good education and a good health, uh, healthcare facilities. If you do that, we don't mind even, they don't mind paying an additional burden on taxes. And Indians, Indians generally are a people with a lot of pride. They don't want anything free unless and until they don't have the means to buy it. If they have the means to buy it, they will do it. I believe the tax terrorism is the word I use. It is not with any central government. It is with both the state and the centers must stop this tax terrorism. They should uh, come up with another sources of generating revenues for them, for the development or for the welfare schemes, but not by taxing more and more to the people. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. P. K. D. Nambia, for giving your views. And Mr. P. K. D. Nambia says he's a strong supporter of uh, Mr. Modi and uh, the central government. But on this point, he is having a different views. And he says that uh, there is enough tax, and he used the word in the end, is the tax terrorism. And he says oh, both the government, central and the state governments are using, and this is a tax terrorism, what they are doing. And they are taking out the money from the pocket of the common pupil and giving back in the name of, uh, they, they are taking uh, out from the pocket by in the name of infrastructure development, and then they are giving back. Instead of that, they must give the jobs. They must create such type of uh, things that everyone is getting money directly from the jobs the, with the dignity and then they spend the money and he has mentioned one point is about the liquor although he uh, pointed towards me that uh, Mr. Goel when you are sitting in the evening um, uh, it's a personal comment so I will not like to re reply here <laughs> but one thing yes I agree with you why not tax more on liquor than the uh, fuel the petrol or the diesel after all and one more thing, although it's out of context, one more thing can be done, a good suggestion I want to give, because I know if a good suggestion will go to Dr. Bose, he always tried to pass it to the government and many of uh, our suggestions in this media conference has been adopted by the government. Uh, and the suggestion is those, the liquor shop should have a record only to give the liquor to those who have been vaccinated. Only those persons should be allowed to give the liquor because liquor is giving above 18 in any case or 21 or 25 years. So when's now the vaccination, because there are lots of uh, vaccine hesitancy or myths are there. 
if we will say you want to drink liquor please have the vaccination anyway that is a different topic but i am sure dr bose can uh, take care of that but my point is tax more on liquor not on uh, uh, fuel but what uh, pk mr pk dinafia says he says that uh, the problem with the government is or even the economist is that they are not coming out with this solution they must come out with a solution and see to it that uh, the tax should not increase otherwise with the way it is increasing we have mentioned the government has mentioned that one tax only but now so many taxes and being an entrepreneur himself mr pk dinamia says the compliance and the paying the tax is a lots of hurdles and he disagree with dr bose about the differential prices um, that businessman will not get or the housewife will get Uh, so he says that it's a practically impossible in a, a population of 130 or 140 uh, million, uh, billion or million 1.3 billion 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 people yes so thank you very much uh, mr pk d nambiar for your uh, views Now i just wanted to have a one quick point on that so i will tell you that the government is working really aggressive on the electric and the oh. the, the new world but oh, yeah. there is a huge amount of crisis today we are talking about we are almost 95 percentage reliant on china one country for the lithium battery and battery is the only primary source in an electric vehicle and unless and until and uh, and uh, the 90% of the lithium reserves are now in the control of china i think government needs to really work oh, differently no. oh. changing just the fuel is not going to be the solution yeah. for a tax problem okay okay so please do join today for kalaj or kal lal welke sang at 4:30 pm thank you very much dr cv anand bose thank you very much uh, uh, ms vinita hariyaran thank you very much mr pk de nambiar and thank you very much ms nujat jahan uh, for joining and giving your views and thank you all the viewers for watching our show thank you